All right. So uh, welcome everyone here to this virtual community meeting regarding the upcoming Ash Crescent Area. Oops, slide changed. Uh, Ash Crescent Area Street Reconstruction Project. My name is Greg Robbins. I'm a project manager with the City of Fort Worth in the Transportation and Public Works Department. On the phone, on the call as well, we have some representatives from the the contractor, from the design engineer, from the water department that will be here to to help with this presentation if needed to answer questions or anything else that may come up. So this presentation is meant to provide you with some information about the scope of the project that's happening in your area, uh, provide you with some information regarding uh, the upcoming construction process and the schedule you know, that, that we expect going forward. So here's the agenda of what I hope to cover in my uh, brief presentation. I'll be talking about the project as a whole providing a summary of the improvements on each street, uh, talking about the construction process, and discussing the expected schedule moving forward, and then I'm gonna block off some time at the end for any questions or comments that you may have. Okay, so uh, first talk about the overall scope of the improvements. Uh, this project includes eight streets in, uh, in the Ash Crescent area that are slated for reconstruction, so they are uh, with Ann Street from Avenue C to Avenue D, Ash Crescent Street from East Vickery to Avenue E, Avenue B from uh, Riverside Drive to Ash Crescent Street, Avenue C from Ash Crescent Drive to MLK Freeway, Avenue D from Ash Crescent uh, to MLK Freeway, Bells East Terrace from Avenue, Avenue C to Avenue D, and then we have Elmwood Avenue uh, from Bells East Terrace to MLK Freeway, and uh, Uvalde Street from Richmond to MLK Freeway. So um, this slide shows the funding for each street. This project is part of the, the 2022 bond, which was voted on and passed back in May by the residents of Fort Worth. And I apologize, my camera may have gone off. Um, it, I'll try to get it started again. There we go. Um, so we have six, six of the streets associated with this project that are uh, funded by the bond, and we have a couple of streets that are funded by the water department. All right, so um, next couple of slides, I'm gonna discuss the existing conditions and give you a breakdown of the proposed improvements for each street. So this slide shows the existing conditions of these streets and why they were slated for reconstruction in the first place. As you can see from the pictures, the issues that we'll be correcting include uh, damaged asphalt pavement, uh, missing or broken curbs and gutter, uh, damaged or missing sidewalk, uh, missing driveways, damaged driveways, um, as well as replacing or upgrading the water and sewer utilities under the street. So um, I'm kind of breaking these down into a couple of different chunks. You'll see why when we get to the scheduling at the end. But um, for Elmwood and, and Uvalde, um, we'll be installing a new water uh, in both streets, a new sewer line in Uvalde. As for paving improvements, um, we're coming through with new concrete pavement uh, with integrated concrete curbs and new driveways. Um, so for all, for all the driveways on the project, um, they'll be uh, at least 11 feet wide. That's our minimum width, or we're gonna match uh, your existing driveway width and Uvalde Street will have sidewalks on both sides. On Ash Crescent, Avenue C and Avenue D, um, we're gonna be replacing the existing water line with a new eight inch water. And uh, it will be also be concrete pavement with integrated concrete curbs. Uh, same thing with the driveways, uh, 11 foot minimum or matching your existing width. And uh, these streets are getting sidewalk on both sides of the street. And finally, for Avenue B, Ann Street, and Belize Terrace, we'll be replacing the eight inch water that's in the street. And uh, these streets will be getting asphalt pavement uh, with concrete curbs and gutters. And uh, same thing with the, with the driveways, uh, replacing all the concrete driveways. So next I'll provide some information about the construction process and give you an idea of what you can expect and sort of answer some frequently asked questions that come up during these types of meetings. All right, so why are we doing the project in the first place? Um, well, uh, back in May, as I mentioned, uh, the residents of Fort Worth passed the 2022 bond, um, which allows us to have some funds to uh, do reconstruction projects such as this one, which would target some locations in the city that are most need in need of improvement. 
And so when these streets were identified, um, TPW uh, partnered with the Fort Worth Water Department to replace the underground utilities that were also in need of improvements in these same areas. All right, so how do we know that construction is getting ready to start? Well, uh, the first phase of construction is going to be the underground utilities being replaced. So be on the lookout for a notice that looks sort of like this one. Um, we're going to give you, uh, there'll be a couple of different notices. The first one will look something like this. Um, this one will say the con construction is about to start in seven days. And then after that, you will get another one that looks something like this that says construction is starting the next day. So be on the lookout for these as we start approaching the date when construction is getting ready to start. Um, at the end, I'm gonna go through the schedule for each street and give you an idea of when you can expect uh, improvements to start being made. But these these door hangers will, uh, will give you an idea of when exactly the, the construction is about to start. Okay, so during the construction of a, of a new water line, um, there will be times when your service will be interrupted. Um, it'll be in, turned off for uh, approximately a few hours when service is being transferred from the existing uh, water line to a temporary water line. And then again, when service is transferred from that temporary water line uh, to the new water pipe that's been installed. Um, you'll be notified when this, is, when this is about to happen to let you know when this service interruption is about to happen. All right, so here's some information about the, the water services that, are, that, we, that will be installed. Note that uh, we only replace water services up to your property line, and we don't make improvements uh, onto, pro onto private property, uh, but we will be replacing the water services up to the, uh, like I said, up to the, the property line. Uh, we'll get a new meter box and, uh, and a new meter. So flushing the, the, the line is an important step to putting a new water line into service. So if you happen to see water running down, down the street, um, don't, don't turn it off. Uh, don't, uh, don't find a valve and try to, and try to turn, it, turn it off. Uh, it could be that we're getting water samples, uh, testing the line, doing other things. So just know that if possible, you may see flushing happen. Uh, you may see uh, samples being taken. So don't worry about it. It is uh, just part of the construction process. So, like I mentioned, to be able to keep water service to your home during the during construction, uh, we have to run a temporary water line uh, to your house. You can see it there in the in this picture next there to the cone. There's the pipe running down the street, a small pipe. So there'll be a temporary water line laid, and it'll run uh, a temporary service to your house. So note that while you are on temporary water. Um, you will be billed based on an average of previous month's uh, usage. So um, you won't be directly billed for water you use during this time when you're on temporary water. It'll be, it'll be based on previous bills. All right, so the other question, will you need access to our property? Uh, most likely we won't. Um, but in the event that we do, we need access for something or another, we will let you know before we, we just come onto your property. Um, for the sewer services, um, there's only one sewer on this particular project and it's going in on Uvalde. Um, during the construction of the new sewer, uh, sewer line, your sewer service will not be interrupted during the construction. Um, we'll be installing new, new sewer services to each property, as well as installing a new clean out at the property line. And so what that looks like is sort of like this. Um, here's a diagram that shows the portion of the new sewer that the city owns and maintains. So as mentioned, we're gonna install uh, the portion there that's in blue in that, uh, in that diagram. So we'll be installing the, the new sewer line, the service to your house, and then a clean out at the property line. Uh, some of you may be wondering how we deal with existing irrigation systems. Uh, if your existing system is near the street, the contractor will have to uh, cut and cap your sprinkler line prior to construction. So if the, if the contractor uh, either, either breaks your, your irrigation during construction or, or does cap it prior to, to getting started, uh, they'll be the ones that will, will get it uh, made right before construction is complete. All 
All right, so here's some information regarding the improvements that are being made above the ground. So all curbs on this project are being replaced or added if one did not exist in the first place. For existing driveways, as I mentioned, the city will replace portions that are in the city right away, and they will all be at minimum 11 feet wide, and we will, or we will match what you currently have. Um, and then most streets are also getting new sidewalk on at least one side of the road. There are a couple of exceptions, though, that uh, a couple of streets that won't get sidewalk. Um, another question that we get a lot is whether you'll have access to your driveway during construction. So unfortunately, there will be times when access to your driveway is limited. Uh, you won't be able to access it when your driveway itself is being is being built, um, um, as well as when the pavement in front of your property uh, is, is being installed. So the contractor will let you know when this is going to happen, and so so that you can make arrangements for for other other parking arrangements, so that you don't uh, come home one day to surprise that you that you can't access your driveway that day. Uh, the contractor will be making a pre-construction video prior to their uh, starting work. Um, but we do encourage you to also take some pictures of your property once you see that, that construction is getting ready to start, take some pictures, take some video, um, just, just to be on the safe side um, so that we have uh, something to go on in case there is some damage that, that occurs. And I, I do see a question in the, in the chat. Um, thanks for putting that in there. I will get to it at the end of the presentation if that's okay. All right, so um, during construction, there will be some temporary lane closures. It's just the nature of, of construction. We gotta get our equipment down the street. Um, so just be aware that, that, that it will happen. Um, signage will be posted to keep drivers aware of, of the work that's occurring and what the traffic movement is supposed to be. Um, also on here are our hours of construction. During the week, our hours of construction for the contractor are between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. And then if, it's, if it is requested, um, between nine and five on Saturdays. Um, so if the contractor is working in your street on a day that trash is to be collected, um, they, they can help you out to make sure that they're, you know, the trash truck is not impeded or moving your bins to a different location to make sure that it gets picked up on the collection days. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the construction phasing and the anticipated schedule. So utilities will be installed first. So that will be the water lines on all the streets and the sewer line on Uvalde. Um, after they are installed and connected, there will be a temporary paving patch that is put in place until the street is ready to be paved. And my camera went off again, I'll start it. I'm sorry about that. Um, so you can see there in the third picture, you can, the, the asphalt patch is in the street, that's a temporary patch. Uh, that's put in place after the utilities are installed uh, to give a, a, a smoother driving surface during the time between when the utilities are installed and when we're ready to come back and actually pave the road. For concrete streets, um, all the existing pavement uh, curbs and driveways will be excavated uh, first, then the pavement and the curb will be installed together. It's installed, uh, we call it monolithically, uh, so the, the curb is integrated with the, the pavement itself. So those will be installed together. And then, so, and the contract will most likely do half the street at a time. You can kind of see it in the third picture there where they're doing one lane. Um, and then finally, when the, that is done, they'll come back and install the new driveways. Uh, for asphalt streets, the streets on this project that are asphalt, the existing curb and driveways are removed, uh, are first removed and replaced, and then the existing pavement is removed in, in preparation to come back and pave it. So here's an example of what um, a new concrete street will look like. You can see the, the, the integrated curbs and gutters, uh, the, the concrete driveways and the sidewalks on the side. So it'll be something that looks, looks like this. Um, and here's kind of what you can expect a, the new asphalt streets to look like. So um, brand, brand new pavement, the, the concrete curbs and gutters, new driveways, new sidewalks. And then for both.
uh, we will be installing new concrete sidewalks on, on, on many of the streets uh, with new ADA wheelchair ramps at intersections. All right, so here is our anticipated uh, schedule kind of broken down by street. Construction activities will begin on March 13th, so here in you know, a little over a, a month and a half or so, and they're expected to run until April of 2024. The contractor is planning to perform the construction in three separate, I'll call them chunks. Uh, the first uh, will be on Uvalde and Elmwood, which will be the first to start with the new water and sewer line inst installations and hopefully finishing paving by October of, the, of this year. The next chunk will be Ash Crescent, Avenue C, and Avenue, uh, Avenue D, um, the other concrete streets in this project. And then finally, Avenue B, Belzees, and Ann, the, the streets that are being reconstructed in asphalt. Please note that just because the schedule shows several months that your street will be under construction, that, that doesn't mean that construction will be actively ongoing during that entire time. Um, so there will be some time between when the utilities are finished and uh, finished with their installation and the next uh, the next phase of construction occurs when the paving crews come in. So I didn't want to scare anybody by saying thinking someone's going they're going to have uh, you know bulldozers in the streets for for nine months straight. All right, so we've now come to the end of the presentation. Uh, we'll move into our question. Uh, question and comments portion. Uh, so if you if you have anybody else has any questions, feel free to put those in the chat. Uh, I'll go ahead and answer those first, and then we can get to anyone else uh, who may be on the phone that wants to unmute themselves and um, and ask a question. So the question that I have in chat um, is, how long will driveways be inaccessible? So um, I do I we do have some uh, representative from the contractor on the phone, so he can. Uh, chime in if you want, but uh, in general, uh, for for driveways, uh, you won't be you won't have access to them while the the concrete is installed um, and and is curing. So um, anywhere from uh, five to seven days while the concrete cures, and uh, a couple of days before that to to set the forms and actually place the concrete. Uh, the the other time uh, if you wouldn't have access is if the paving is uh, right in front of your driveway. If you're, if you're on a concrete street, it would be kind of the same amount of time, um, five, five to seven days, four to seven days while that concrete cures. Uh, asphalt streets don't take uh, as long. So once we can come through and, uh, and actually pave the street with, with asphalt, I believe it's only about a day or so before, before access is, 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 is back. If any, if any of the contractor, or anybody else had uh, any follow ups on that, um, I'm, I'm welcome to it as well. Yeah, Greg, this is Justin with McClendon. You, you pretty much got it right. So uh, we'll have a day where we're setting up the driveway, then the pour the following day for the driveway or the paving. Uh, and then, like you said, about four to five days of cure. So typically about a week uh, from the day we, we block it until it's cured and can be opened. Will we know when that week is going to be in advance? Yes, we'll give you a notice uh, and try to tape it to your door for both any any kind of interruption. There is no place in this neighborhood to safely leave a vehicle unattended outside the property. So we won't be able to leave for a week and I won't, we'll have to be prepared for it in advance. Okay. I understand that. Um, I think you'll, so, so really what would be the easiest thing for you to see is once we get the road excavated. So basically when all the utilities have finished and we come in there and remove the existing street and it's just down to dirt, the next step is treating that dirt with a chemical. Uh, then we get into the paving. So once we get into that phase, then you can potentially call our office and we can coordinate a little more directly with you if you like. We'll, we'll need to, like I say, there's this, it, it might, that leads to my next question. This neighborhood is covered in homeless 
populations. There are probably 30 tents right now and people living in lots and their trash is build builds up and that sort of thing. How will construction crews deal with that transient population? Uh, don't really have a plan to deal with them. We've never really come across that. So uh, unless it becomes an issue, we're not going to we're not going to address it directly. Okay. Um, I would I would possibly suggest during construction, um, if there's no if there's no parking in on adjacent streets, maybe uh, when it comes time to uh, that you won't have access to your driveway, may maybe uh, speaking with a neighbor across the street or something to see if it would if across the street parking would be available. It's um, not during available. That time. <laughs> it's not available. Sorry. It's going to be very, it's just going to be very inconvenient. And so I'll, we can work around it, but it's going to be extremely inconvenient. And being forewarned is extremely important so that we can plan for it. I want the construction to be done, but this is extremely disruptive. Right. right. Yes, it is. Now, what, uh, what road do you live on specifically? On Avenue C. Avenue C. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I just um, put uh, I put my contact information in the chat. If y'all want to uh, write my name and phone number down, it will also be on the notices that we put out. Uh, but again, you have it have it right here if you want to go ahead and jot that down. All right, were there any other any other questions or comments, concerns? What kind of noise is this going to, I mean, like how, is it going to be noise all day long for several days? Is it going to be a day of digging or a day of two digging? And then, or is it like, what can we expect with that as well? We work from home, so um, we're here all the time. Yeah, I would say whenever, whenever the phase is right adjacent to your your house then and, and it's going to be noise for the majority of the day uh, but it's kind of a linear process so we start at one end of the street work down to the other um, so as, as we get further away from your property you probably won't notice as much of it and that's so you'll dig the whole street out first and then you'll do concrete on one side and then the other, or you'll move from one end to the other end of the street? Yes, for the for the paving, we would start at, like I said, at one uh, end or the other, and then we would pour half of the width of the road. So you would still use the other half that is not, uh, not being constructed at the moment to travel uh, to and from still until the road concrete's open. Okay. Did that kind of answer your question? Yeah, I just trying to get, trying to get a sense of how how this is all going to go. I mean, the scene, like I, I said, the scene, I've seen it in other neighborhoods before, and it it takes a long time and it looks like a big mess. So I'm trying to prepare myself for a long time in a big mess. So that, uh, that, that, that does sound be... sound accurate. So fair, it's a fair assessment. <laughs> So Avenue C is getting concrete. So I, I pulled back up this slide that shows the concrete process, and you can kind of see what Justin's talking about, where we're doing half half of the road at a time. So in the in the third picture here, we've already done the lane that's on the right, and then uh, we're, we're, they come back and do the lane on the left. So that's sort of what it would look like. So one half of the road will always be passable. Yes, that's correct. But there will be a week where we can't get in or out because our driveway will be curing or whatever. Right. We're replacing, yes. We'll be replacing the driveway so you wouldn't be able to drive on it. The tree and landscaping that is a part of the easement. So we have our we have our mailbox and our we have landscaping rocks and the the, the sprinkler system which you addressed earlier. Do we need to clear all of that out before you get there, or will you? No, like we'll 
we'll remove as needed and then we'll restore it. Uh, that's why we take that video that Greg mentioned uh, to document the existing conditions. And then if you have rocks uh, or something other than sod, then, um, you know, we would make the best effort to match that with the same material. Okay. Well, we'll, I guess when that, when the time comes for that to happen, we can, we, you'll, we'll be engaged at some point. I'll, I'll be talking to somebody on site to make sure yes. cause it, it matters that it matches. <laughs> so. I understand. I understand. So there will be a, uh, there will be a construction inspector uh, on site during, during the pro uh, during, during the project. Um, I'm going to go and skip to the, the slide here that has our contact information. So uh, th this is my this is my phone number. This is my email address. Um, anything anything that comes up during construction, whether it, it you have a question, you have a concern, you have a problem, give me a call. Um, this is what I'm here for. This is um, th this is what I hope to be able to help you help you all out with. So feel free to definitely give me a call if you need something. Inspector on this project. His name is Brandon. Uh, his phone number is here. Um, if you know, if you see him walking around or driving around, feel free to flag him down and ask him any questions. But he'll be the one that, with with boots on the ground, with the contractor, uh, check in, make sure everything's going okay. So definitely uh, take down these two numbers. Um, and yeah, feel free to give us a call if you need something. All right. Thank you. All right, um, I can come back to the slide here in just a second, but I want to show this slide right here. Uh, where can you get more information? So uh, progress for this uh, project will be on the city of Fort Worth's website. So um, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can either write down this long uh, uh, URL, or if you just go to the city of Fort Worth's uh, main web page, uh, the home page and type in this project number one zero two nine three one. Um, that's the project number for this project. Um, it should take you uh, right to the page that you need to go to. So it, it'll have um, this video, uh, a link to this video, a map, um, some, inf some uh, further information about the scope of the project, things like that. So. Oops, and I didn't mean to didn't mean to kill the presentation there. But yeah, uh, this is the this is the end of the project. So if anyone, I, I can leave the the screen up for just a little bit um, in, in case anybody didn't finish writing down the contact information. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, anybody that's on the call uh, now is the time. Or if you don't want to ask it in the meeting here, definitely definitely give me a call and we can talk about whatever it is uh, you have a concern about. Um, I don't see any other uh, questions in the chat. So if that's it, thank you uh, everyone for your attendance today. Thank you for being here. Um, like I said, feel free to reach out to me by phone or email if you have any follow-up questions or comments. And if I don't, uh, if there's nothing else, I hope everyone has a good evening. Thank you.